I want to ask you to turn with me in your Bible to Romans chapter 5 as we continue to take a look at the grace of God. We're going to look at Romans chapter 5. We're going to start reading at verse 18 and we'll go into the first couple verses of chapter 6. It says, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? This morning we want to take a look at the power of God's grace. The power of God's grace. Uh, Because many of us as Christians, what we find is that we have this powerful tool for us to use. But we don't take advantage of that tool. The grace of God. The scripture tells us that is there a lot of sin in this world? Absolutely. Is there an increase in sin, in sin in this world? Absolutely. But it also tells us that where sin abounded, that grace abounded more. It tells us that even though the law was formed because what happened was the law was anticipating that there would be an increase in sin. And so therefore, the law was created to cover sin. But you see, the law cannot compensate for us. The law cannot erase the consequences of sin in our lives. It's only the blood of Jesus that took that sin away for us. When we otherwise would have been put in prison by the law, where sin would have locked us behind the bars of guilt, behind the bars of shame, behind the bars of deception and of fear. Sin did nothing, and it still does nothing, but it shackles us to a wall of misery if we allow it. But when Jesus Christ came, he paid our bail. He served our time. He satisfied the penalty and he set us free this morning. And so that's why we can say where sin abounded, grace abounded more. And so we don't have to live under the penalty of sin anymore. We don't have to live feeling guilty. We don't have to live feeling ashamed of ourselves, feeling all of this deception and fear gripping us. We don't have to live that way anymore because of the grace of God. Because Jesus Christ came and he paid that ultimate price for us so that we could walk in freedom. I want you to reflect a little bit on the gift that God has given us through his son Jesus Christ. What was that gift that he gave us so that we could now walk under grace? Many of you are very familiar with this verse of scripture, John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave the only son that he had. It is a gift that God has given us. We can now have peace. We don't have to live under the grip of sin, under the grip of guilt, under the grip of fear. We don't have to live in in lack and in sickness and in pain. Because Jesus Christ has already given us the gift of life. We can be washed from all of the consequences of sin by the blood of Jesus. But what happens as Christians is that as Christians is that we don't take God up on his offer. We 
We usually pass up on the offer. I want you to think about this for a moment. And this is how we behave. In the last year or so, we have seen airlines just offering uh, flights for almost nothing. The other day I was reading that you could get a flight uh, to Alaska for $11. That you could, have, you could go to Florida for a round trip out of Boston on a trip, just to put it into perspective, that normally would cost four or $500. You could get that trip for thirty or forty dollars. The airlines were giving away flights literally because they had to stay up in the air. The airplanes had to be flying. If you think about it, there was fuel that was being produced that they would have had a too much of a surplus of fuel, so they had to keep burning the fuel. The flights had to be up in the air even in the middle of pandemic. And so they were saying if the the planes have to be flying anyway, we might as well just allow people to fly in the airplanes too. So we'll just offer them just a minimal, almost nothing for them to fly. Do you think there were many takers during the height of the pandemic on airplanes? I remember going to Colorado in July, flying to Colorado from Boston, about a two- or three-hour flight, and there was just about nobody on the flight. Although the offer was there, and it, under normal circumstances, it would look pretty good, no, no one wanted it. No one was taking that offer from the airline, and so the airplanes were empty. We do the same with God. God is making us this incredible, incredible offer of his gift, that gift that comes with receiving Jesus Christ in our lives. He's saying, come and receive the Lord into your life, and he will fill you with his grace. It's an offer of a free flight to heaven, free access to heaven. That we have, and it's powerful. It is so incredible. Because when we look at the options that we have for receiving the grace of God, it's a no-brainer. I want you to think about it for the moment. When you receive that grace over your life, what does it provide for you? It provides you with liberation, with freedom. From chains, freedom from stains, freedom from pains of the past. Wouldn't you accept that offer? Who wants to be mired in the things of the past? It's like somebody delivering, uh, uh, setting an inmate free and saying you are free to leave your cell and to, to go and live a free life. And that discharged prisoner says, no, I, I want to still stay. Can you imagine? The thought of a person preferring jail over freedom, it doesn't compute. And yet, we find so many Christians and non-Christians living in a spiritual jail because they have not yet received the Lord Jesus into their lives. They have not yet accepted that free grace that Christ Jesus has made available for us. You see, when Jesus descended into the grave, what happened? He turned that grave into a changing closet, and he's offering to do the same for you today. He's offering to transform your life. He's offering to change you completely. The same change that happened for, for Jesus Christ when he went, went into that grave. He conquered sin, he conquered death, he conquered guilt, he conquered sickness. And there was a change that happened in that grave. Hallelujah. He changed, turned that grave around into a changing closet. Jesus Christ wants to do the same for you this morning. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. He doesn't want you living in weakness. He doesn't want you living in sickness. He doesn't want you living in despair. He wants to transform you this morning through his grace. 
You see, sin, the, 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 the consequence of sin is death. So as sin increases, so does the prospect of death. But we thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. That grace that says, where sin abounds, guess what? I'm going to throw in my grace to abound much more for you today. And so you will find that the grace of God will elevate you. It will cause you to be lifted up, to reign with him. That's what his grace does. It will embrace you. It will cause you to leave behind the guilt, the pains of the past, the stains, the things that would have kept you chained and and, 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 and bounded. It will remove all of that for you this morning. That's the grace of God. It will liberate you and it will elevate you today. How many of you are takers this morning? How many of you will say, Pastor Avenel, you mean it's free? I get all of that and, and, and I don't have to pay because the price has already been paid for me. I'm a taker this morning. Raise your hand and go ahead and claim it today. That's the grace of God. The grace of God, hallelujah, it will educate you. When His grace is upon your life, what you will find is that you will receive wise counsel. That's what grace does. When His grace is carrying you, you will find that you now have a, a bright future. You, you now have a, a future direction for your life by the grace of God. Hallelujah. When you walk under His grace, his grace will educate you. It is not by any education that you would ob have obtained on your own. It is not based on whether or not you have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD. It's based upon the grace of God in your life. That's what grace does for you. It grants unto you wise counsel. How many of you are takers this morning? The grace of God. The grace of God will compensate for you. In other words, it will take over for you in areas in your life where you feel that you are weak, in areas of your, li your life where you feel like you are lacking ability, you are lacking the competence, the ability for you to do something. God says, guess what? My grace, it is what? Did he say that it is almost sufficient? Did he say that it will almost compensate? No, no, no. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. His grace, it will fill those areas of your life where you feel that there have been a weakness, where you feel that there have been a lack in your life. God's grace will step in for you if only you will believe. If only you will accept that grace of God upon your life today. How many of you are takers? Go ahead and say, Pastor Avenel, I'll take it. You see, I'm not going to pass up on that free grace. It is too powerful. I need it this morning. The grace of God will also, it will motivate you. Hallelujah. It will cause you to have a new vision, a new hope, and a new purpose. You no more will you dwell in your past. No more will you look at the pains of the past. No, your vision will be transformed. Remember, when Jesus Christ went into the grave, he made that grave a changing closet so that it could transform you. And so today, all of your past is buried in that grave today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Everything that may have caused you to have stains, it's washed away by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Washed away. And His grace is now carrying you. His grace will provide the motivation that you need for you to see with new eyes, for you to have new hope, and for you to have purpose. That is the grace of God for you. How many of you are takers? Go ahead and say, Pastor Avenel, I'm a taker this morning. I'm not going to pass up. We've been passing up on the grace of God for too long now. It is time for us to receive that transformation. Where sin abounded, His grace abounded more. And so today, we can look at the way that God transforms us 
through his grace today from the inside and on the outside. He will transform you today. He will cause you to live on a higher level through supernatural resources that he will pour out upon you. Supernatural resources, not things that you can do on your own, but rather things that only God can do. It's not going to be based on your level of training. It's not going to be based on your level of education. It's not going to be based on how many influential people you have around you. When the grace of God steps in for you this morning, He will transform your life to live on a higher level by granting unto you supernatural resources. Father, thank you for your grace this morning. Somebody just thank God for that grace. You've been looking for something supernatural in your life, something to transport you to a new level. Just allow the grace of God to step in for you this morning. Hallelujah. And so we want to allow that grace of God finally to be activated in our lives. Once we are willing to obey God's word today, we can move forward in his cause. He will activate that grace in your life today once you accept it. Once you accept his calling on your life, once you are willing to obey his word today, God will activate that grace in your life today. Hallelujah. How many of you are willing to accept that grace? You want that grace that we just talked about. You want it to be active in your life this morning. I want to pray for you. Dial star five to raise your hand. Pastor Avenel, that grace that you're talking about, I want it activated in my life. I'm a, I'm a taker. I want it to be on full display in my life today. Dial star five to raise your hands. I see so many hands that are raised right now. On your keypad, if you're new to the line, star five to raise your hands. You want that grace activated. Hallelujah. It's too good, too good, too good for you to pass it back. Pass it by. Hallelujah. You want it on full activation. Hallelujah. You want the power on in your life. You want to be empowered by the grace of God today. Star five to raise your hand, even right now, as I pray for you this morning. For Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. Lord, you've said in your word that where sin abounded, where we otherwise would not have had a chance, where we otherwise would have been limited, Heavenly Father, where we otherwise would have fallen apart, Lord, your grace has stepped in on our behalf. That grace, the price of which was paid when Jesus Christ died for us, that grace, Lord, that is now free to us, that comes at no charge whatsoever, I pray, O oh God, that even right now, that you will release your grace upon your Son. Release your grace upon your daughter today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you would free your children from the chains, from the stains, and from the pains, Lord, that have plagued them for too long, and that you would replace it with your grace today. I pray, Heavenly Father, O oh God, that you would lift up your son, lift up your daughter. I pray for wise counsel, for a bright future, O oh Lord, for every person Within the sound of my voice, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will step in in the areas that are weak, in the areas, Lord God, where competence seems to be lacking. Lord, I pray that you would swoop in, you would pour out your grace upon your son, upon your daughter. I pray, O oh Lord God, that you grant unto your children supernatural resources yeah, yeah, yeah. by your grace this morning, Heavenly Father. That which we have not yet tapped into, I pray, O oh God, that your, your grace, Lord, will flow over your son, over your daughter today. I pray for transformation, O oh Lord, in their lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we are willing to accept your offer this morning. Somebody just go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Father, I accept your offer this morning, Lord. I am not going to pass it by. I'm not going to say it's too good to be true. 
Lord, I believe it. And I receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Where sin abounded in my life. Your grace abounds much more. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for the activation of your grace in the lives of your children today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. And so this morning, we're going to declare and we're going to decree over our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you have heard the word. You have accepted the word. And you're all in. you got to be all in with me this morning. Hallelujah. You're going to say, Pastor Avanel, guess what? Where sin abounded in my life, grace abounds much more. Hallelujah. I am standing on Romans chapter 5 and verse 20 today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that where sin abounded in my life, that grace abounds much more. Dial star five to raise your hand. You're going to declare it. You're going to declare it over your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to allow sin to dominate in our lives anymore. It is replaced by the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. And so, therefore, we can stand on Romans chapter 5 and verse 20 today, and we can say with certainty that there is no doubt in our minds that we have sin abounded, that grace abounds much more. Start for us to raise your hand. You're going to speak it into your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We are standing on Romans 5 and verse 20 today. Go ahead, my... Sister Althea. Good morning. I, Althea, declare and decree that according to Romans 5 and 20, there is no doubt in my mind that where sin abounded in my life, that grace abounds much more in the mighty name of Jesus. I claim this for myself, my daughter, and my grandson. Amen. 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 I stand in agreement with you, my sister Althea, that in any area of your life, we are sin abounded, that the grace of God abounds much more for you today. And so you're not going to be stuck in the past anymore. You're going to put the pains of the past behind you in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to put the chains behind you. You're going to put the stains behind you in the name of Jesus because we are sin abounded in your life. Grace now abounds much more. In the name of Jesus. We are standing on Romans 5 and 20 this morning. Go ahead, my sister Dolores. Good morning, uh, 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 Pastor. Greetings in Jesus' name um, to everyone on the line. I declare the decree today, Romans 5 and 20. Where sin abounded, grace abounds much more. I speak this over my daughter, Natasha, Jane, and Carter, and over my siblings, especially Robert. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak the grace of God over Robert. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that the sins of the past will no longer keep him chained, will no longer keep him stained, will no longer keep him pained. In the name of Jesus, I speak over you, my sister Nat- uh, Nat- Natasha and my sister Dolores and Jaden and Carter, that where sin abounded, hallelujah, where sin would have replaced and blocked you from receiving the highest and best, that God's grace abounds much more in your life. And so, therefore, you have liberty. Therefore, you are strong. Therefore, hallelujah, you have supernatural resources available to you in the name of Jesus. Your future is bright. You have wise counsel. Hallelujah. You are competent in all things through the grace of God. Where sin abounded in your life, Grace abounds much more. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God this morning for that affirmation. Go ahead, my sister Renee. Praise the Lord this morning, woman of God. Hallelujah. I declare it. In Romans 5 and 20, in the name of Jesus, I am grace. Hallelujah. God abounds in my life today. 
I am abounded in my life. I have liberty in the name of Jesus. I stand for my family, my grandson, hallelujah, and everybody else in the name of Jesus. I am peace and bound. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare Amen. that this morning. I Amen. thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. I stand thank in agreement you. with you, my sister Renee, Hallelujah. by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. That where sin abounded, where sin would otherwise have blocked you, would have blocked your son, your grandson, in the mighty name of Jesus, the grace of God abounds much more, and it has replaced the consequences of sin over you, over your son, over your grandson, over your loved ones, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the empowerment of God's grace upon your life, and I declare over you today, Romans 5 and 20, that where sin abounded, that grace now abounds much more in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, my sister Alicia. Yes, good morning, everyone. I declare the decree this morning, and I'm standing on Romans 5 and 20, where sin abound in my life, grace abound much more. I speak this over my daughter Chastity and Alyssa, my son Terrence, and his family, my son Ray. I speak it over my granddaughters and my brothers and sisters in this ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I speak that powerful grace over you, Alicia, that grace that transforms, that grace that renews, that grace that liberates. I speak God's grace over you. I speak God's grace over every single one of your children, Chastity, Alicia, Ray, Terrence. I speak the grace of God over your grandchild in the name of Jesus. Where sin abounded, no more grace has replaced. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And so we stand on that word with you this morning, and we call it done, in the mighty name of Jesus. We are standing on Romans chapter 5 and verse 20. We have sin abounded in my life, grace now abounds much more. Go ahead, my mother Lula, go ahead. Good morning, Pastor Abraham and everyone else. I declare and decree I stand on Romans 5 and 20. We have sin abounded in my life. Grace abound much more for myself, my son Earl, my son Randy, my daughter Nikki, daughter Donella, Stephanie, and all of my grandkids and great grand, my nieces and nephews, sisters and brother, my son in law, my two son in law. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Where sin abounded, hallelujah. Where sin would have limited you, God's grace has replaced. Hallelujah. His grace abounds for you, Mother Lula. His grace abounds for every single one of your children, for Danella, Stephanie, Nicole, Earl, Randy, for the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, where sin abounded, yeah, yeah, yeah. God's grace abounds much more in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, His grace has been released into your life today. It's been fully activated for you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Mother Edith, we're studying on Romans 5 and 20. Where sin abounded, grace abounds much more. Go ahead, Mother Edith. God bless everyone. Good morning, Pastor Abner. Thank you. Um, I declare and decree and stand on God's word and promises and the scripture, uh, Romans 5, 20, for me, my families, and everyone I come in contact with. Where sin abounds in our lives, grace abounds much, 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 much more. And I thank you, Pastor Avenel, for taking your time with me. I love you. God bless. But good morning, everybody. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Mother uh, Mama D, for uh, for speaking these words this morning in the name of Jesus over your life, over your children. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, where sin abounded, where sin was causing blockade in your life, in the name of Jesus, God's grace abounds much more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, my brother Victor. Yes. Um, Romans 5.20. Where sin abounded in my life, grace abounds more in me, mercy abounds more in me, and righteousness abounds more in me. It's all been given to me. And I have such a joy this morning since you said that. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Pastor Avenel, 
I just want to hug you right now and just hold you for that. It was a great one. I came out of surgery, and he just put the joy on my face with that this morning. So I'm feeling better. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for you, my brother Victor, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm so glad that you're back on with us this morning. Hallelujah. Where sin would otherwise have wanted to take your life, God's yes. grace has stepped in for you. This Amen. Morning. Where sin would have caused you to want to feel distressed and sad, God's grace has replaced for you in the name of Jesus. And so I speak over your life right now that you will receive rapid recovery from surgery through the grace of God that he has placed upon your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak full recovery for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the transformation power of the blood of Jesus over your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak courage and strength for you today. Where sin abounded, grace abounds much more for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, touch your son even right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the covering that you have provided for him even right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I stand in agreement with you this morning. That where sin may have abounded, that God's grace abound much more. Go ahead, my sister Arlene. Good morning, everyone. On the prayer line this morning, I decree and declare Romans 5:20, where sin abounded me, grace abounded me much more. I speak that over John and life. I speak that over Bradford, Bedford, and Patrick, and my rest of my household. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I declare and I decree over you, my sister Arlene, over Bedford, Bradford, Janelle, in the name of Jesus, Patrick, yea, that where sin abounded, hallelujah, God's grace has replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's grace is sufficient for you. His grace uh, is providing you with power, with strength. Uh, it's freeing you from the chains of the past. Uh, it's lifting you up, hallelujah. It's granting unto you new direction. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are sin about it. His grace abounds much more for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, my sister Natasha. Natasha, good morning. Yes, Natasha. Natasha. Oh, Natasha. good morning, everyone. Good morning. I declare the decree. Good morning. I declare the decree where sin has uh, abounded, grace will abound for me and my children and my parents in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. His grace is available for you this morning. Where sin abounded, his grace has now replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and decree the grace of God. I release it over your life. I release it over Jaden and Carter. In the name of Jesus, over your parents, in Jesus' name, that the grace of God has been made available for you, even as you have received it, in Jesus' name. And so, therefore, it is yours today. I speak God's grace over every single one of you, my brother, over every single one of you, my sister, by the power of the blood of Jesus. I declare and I decree today that the grace of God is overflowing in your life. In the name of Jesus, that the grace of God has brought you to new heights. I declare and I decree and I speak over your life today that the grace of God is more than sufficient for you this morning. That his grace will cover you. That his grace will transform you. That his grace will lift you up. That his grace will grant unto you the supernatural increase that you seek. In the mighty name of Jesus, that God's grace will pour in for you. In the name of Jesus, that it will overflow, it will abound over your life this morning. I speak the supernatural, divine increase of God's grace over your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I call it done. Where sin abounded in your life, grace abounds much more. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for that which has been spoken concerning your children. And we call it done. In Jesus' mighty name. And let the children of God say, Amen. Go ahead and say, Amen. 
and amen. Bless the Lord. It has truly, truly, truly been a pleasure to have been praying with you this morning and receiving the word with you today. Praise God. We're going to have a repeat of that word in about 40 minutes at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. In about 40 minutes, we will be back on again. Hallelujah. And we usually do the 8 a.m. session predominantly, primarily for those waking up from the West Coast. But you are more than welcome to come back and listen again. If you were blessed by the word this morning, you want to hear it again, you want it to seep in. There are several ways that you can also listen to that word again. We have, we put the word on our Facebook and our YouTube channel as well. We also um, have the word available on SoundCloud. And uh, we will be uh, podcasting very soon, so you'll be able to receive that way. You can also dial in to listen to the word. How many of you knew this? You can dial in um, at any time during the course of the day to listen to the word from the current day. So if you want to listen again to the recording, uh, you can do that. Drop me a text message, and I will send you dial-in information that you can call and listen to the word today. Amen. I want to encourage your heart this morning, praise God, even as God has uh, reaffirmed the availability of His grace into our lives, that we will step into this day in that authority today, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I thank God for each one of you. My sister Victoria, if you would like to close, go ahead, dial star five to raise your hand. I want to look forward to seeing you guys back on again. Our brothers and sisters, we're going to be back on at 8 a.m. this morning, 12 noon. My sister Victoria Mother Ferdinand will be on at 12 noon. At um, 9 p.m. this evening, we will be uh, we will be having our extended prayers at 9 p.m. All the prayer warriors will be on, including myself, if you are able to join Eastern Time. We have been contemplating... Um, moving the evening prayers to 8 p.m. instead of 9 Eastern Time, 8 p.m. We will give you more information about that uh, in, the coming, in, in the coming days. But for tonight, we will start at 9 p.m. Eastern Time um, this evening. Praise God. We thank God for you. I want to encourage you today. If you have been blessed by the Word, you're being fed, you're enjoying every moment of the Word today. I want to encourage you to so your tithe, your offering into that work. You're eating every day, and uh, you want to make sure that you sow where you are fed. Make sure that you're sowing where you are fed. So if you're being fed, you need to sow. You can give on our website, fulfillchurch.com. You also can uh, use PayPal or Zelle to office at wrcm.us or the Cash App. Look for FL Church on the Cash App. Or call us, 857-342. 3440 call or text us. God bless you, everybody. It has been a joy to have been with you today. I'm going to unmute the line right now to allow you to greet, and then we'll have the music on. See you back for repeat in about uh, 40 minutes or so.